Hey everyone, I'm Coach Shippies and I've been a professional top laner or head coach for the past 8 years. During this time I've reached Worlds and MSI multiple times. Now I'm a full time coach with a ton of passion towards helping players unlock their potential and climb to their dream rank. Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about the items of Season 14. We're going to be talking about how strong they are, which champions they're going to be best on, and just in general the best situations for when you can buy these items. Now keep in mind I'm only going to be talking about it from the perspective of a top laner, I'm only really going to talk about how it benefits top lane champions and top laners in general. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. So I'm going to be going through the items one by one, but I will be talking about the general item pairings and best builds around these items and the champions are going to be best on. So feel free to skip down below to the timestamp items, whatever you feel like is going to be best for your champion pool. So we're going to start with Storm Surge. This is the strongest item in the game right now. This item is just insane and it pairs really well with Shadow Flame or even Protobelt. Now the champions you're going to be building this item on for top lane are going to be Akali, extremely good on her as a second or a first item. Vladimir, quite good as well, and a champion like Rumble. Champions like this use it extremely well. Now for Akali, for example, if you're up against a ranged matchup and you're getting poked down under tower, hard to get some income, it can actually be better for you to go Protobout first. The item is extremely cheap, and if you go Protobout into Shadow Flame, your two core is going to be extremely powerful. However, if you're winning your lane quite handily, or maybe you're versus a melee champ, not putting that much pressure onto you, maybe you got a couple early solo kills, you can feel free to straight up rush the Shadow Flame, uh, the Storm Surge into Shadow Flame combo. This two item pairing is the strongest, but for top lane, it's a lot harder to build at their mid lane, because you're not going to be getting any HP, which you'd get from the Protobout, and also it's a bit more expensive than going Proto into Shadow Flame. Which doesn't really matter that much, it depends on the matchup, but getting your protobout really early on compared to having to wait that extra goal for Shadow Flame can be the difference in certain matchups, so keep that in mind. And the problem with going protobout uh, Storm Surge and then Shadow Flame is you're really delaying your Void Staff Death Cap, or even Crypto Bloom Death Cap, whatever you want to go in that game, and it's going to make it really hard for you to scale. You have to have 5 items before you have Death Cap and a Magic Pen item, which is basically the end of the game. So keep that in mind, it's really hard to go all 3 of these items, Proto Shadow Flame and... Storm Surge, but Storm Surge is extremely powerful, so I definitely recommend having it in your build for these strong AP burst champions such as Akali, Vladimir, or Rumble. Moving on to Sundered Sky, and this is the strongest item right now in the game for Bruises, and it's basically the replacement for Divine Sundra, but a good thing about it is because it doesn't build out a Sheen, you're not locked into only building it on Sheen champs, so you can build it on champs like Aatrox, or Renekton, or Sep. Just strong, beefy AD Bruises, it's going to do really well on them, so I recommend having this as one of your first two items, depending on matchup and game state. And a cool thing about it, is even though the cooldown is a lot longer than Sundra, it has a 6 second cooldown, you can actually proc it on a lot of on different people. It doesn't have a cooldown, in general it's got a cooldown for each specific champion. So you can basically run around in a teamfight trying to proc it as much as you can, auto attacking one person each, and on Aatrox the healing is of course magnified by ulti, so it's going to feel really good, but it feels good on the majority of these Bruiser champs. I'll stay away from it on champions like Camille, because she uses Triforce and uh, Spirit Shogun a lot better, we'll talk about that later, but on, even on a champ like Jax you can build this as your second item, it's going to give you a lot of threat, a lot of power, so I recommend experimenting with this if you play any AD Bruiser champions as one of your first two items. Now as for Juxtra the Protein, I strongly recommend you build this item on every single tank you play, and even tanky bruises can build it. However, you never want to be building it as a first item, because the passive works off bonus resistances, so you need to make sure you actually have some resists before you build it. And the best champions it's going to be on are going to be tanks, of course, like Kassante or Orn or Sion, really good on them. And a standard build where you'd be looking to build it would be, let's say you're playing Cassante, you'd go Iceborne Gauntlet first, and then you could go Juxtra the Protein if you wanted, if they have primarily physical damage. Because you don't need to be committing a full MR item and then Juxtra, which also builds out an MR, if their comp doesn't have that many magic threats, or let's say they have a Syndra mid, but she's doing quite poorly, and she's the only magic damage, then you could go Iceborne into Juxtra with it played in Steel Caps, and you're going to get a ton of value from this item still. But let's say they have, you know, their Syndra's playing quite well, and they have a Zyra support, they have quite a bit of magic damage, then you're probably going to be wanting to pick up an MR item, and then go Juxtra on the Protein 3rd. Moving on to Frozen Heart, and a huge reason why I've got this item as S tier, and I think it's overpowered, is just because it's so cheap. The item is extremely cheap, really easy to pick up, and very gold efficient. The stats you get from this item, not including the passive, has a ton of gold efficiency, I think over 130%. Even the build path, Glacial Shroud's pretty efficient. So this item is really cheap and efficient to build. The stats are really good, even if the passive doesn't give you the most value. If you're playing a tank and you're up against a lot of AD champs, it's still going to be very valuable. And you can build it on non-tanks as well, let's say you're playing Jax, you can actually go this item 
second or third after you've got a bit of damage in your build. Let's say they have a Graves Jungle, you have a Jace Top Graves Jungle, and they have an ADC. Frozen Knight could actually be a great pickup as your second item. You could get it third, of course, if you're snowballing, but this item is just so cheap, so easy to pick up, that I recommend looking into it on a lot of strong Bruiser champs and having it as an option as a rush on tanks. Moving on to Kana Grukun, and this item is the best in the game to build up against control mages and artillery mages in general. So if you're up against a Syndra, maybe it's a Zeraf or a Huey, this item is going to be very valuable. Because as a tank, your main job in team fights is to create space. Allow your backline to do their job, maybe it's to hard engage in certain games, but for the most part creating space in a team fight is your primary role. You might need a face check, get vision for your team, and this item is going to allow you to do all that. Because the huge shield you get is going to block all the poke that inco that's incoming from these artillery mages, control mages. You get ADMR from this item as well. It makes you very tanky, so it's really easy for you to front mage even against these long range champions. And you're not going to get poked out or chunked and not have to start the fight at half HP. Now another good use for this item is you can actually rush your top lane in certain matchups. So for example... If you're playing Orn versus Gwen, which is historically Orn's worst matchup, if you rush this item, the matchup is actually going to be easy because she pokes you down with QE, gets you lower and lower, can use her W to block you, you retrading onto her, and if you E onto her, she'll ult you and run you down. But if you have this item, she QEs onto you, it's going to get blocked by the shield, you back off, you wait for the item to pop, the shield to come back, you can walk up again, and you're not going to be able to get poked down at all just from building this one item which means Gwen is going to have to scale a lot longer into the game before she can really look to do meaningful damage to you on in side lane, which is going to make it a lot easier for you to even contest her for a wave in side lane, maybe take a bit of damage, but the shield's going to block most of it, and then move into your team and hard engage on the enemy. So this item is very valuable not just in team fights at blocking poke and, you know, being a front lane for your team, but also in certain top lane matchups where they need to poke you down before they can look to all in you. Now, as for Spear of Shojin, this item is extremely good on AD bruises that are very reliant on their spells and having low cooldowns. So champions such as Aatrox, Riven, and Camille, really good on them. And a the thing about Camille is the damage amplification from the new Shojin passive actually works on her Q2, her true damage kick. So this item actually makes her two item spike a lot stronger than last season. However, her laning is a lot weaker. She doesn't have that extra terrain to use to hit ease on you. Of course, the map is a lot more open up, so she does struggle in that aspect but as a two item spike on her this item makes her extremely powerful so if you can get to two items unscathed on her you're going to be a bit of a menace this item makes her do a lot more damage and it's really good on other champions such as aatrox and riven where you want your cooldowns to be as low as possible and the extra damage is of course going to uh, help as well moving on to rocket bell now this item is strong because it gives you a ton of all-in threat for such a cheap price this item is so cheap and it can be really good in melee versus range matchups, depending on how much gold you have when you recall. So for example, let's say you're playing uh, Akali versus Jace, and you base your first recall, maybe you get two Amptones, maybe you get your Hectic Alternator, and then on your next base, you're probably not going to have enough for that Storm Surge, it's way too expensive. So you might be able to pick up a Protobout on your second recall, maybe your third base, get this really cheap item ahead of the curve before the Jace has finished his first item, and use that to all in him and, you know, secure a kill over him. And it can be good on champions like Mordekaiser as well if you're playing melee versus range matchups let's say you're up against a teemo you might need this item to help you get onto him and stick onto him or just in general if they have a ton of range champions in their kit this item can be quite valuable because it's so cheap but if you base with enough money for a key item such as storm surge on akali most of the time you are just going to be wanting to pick up that item but some of the time you will actually delay it if you need the hp so if you're playing akali versus yone for example maybe you base with enough with storm surge but you still pick up that protobout because they have yone maybe they have a rexa as well you want to have a bit more beef from your items and just going storm surge and shadow flame is going to make you too squishy up next we have leandries and man i'm glad this item is finally given back to the top laners and this item is really strong on champions such as Mordekaiser, Rumble, champions that are basically AP bruises, and it can also be really good on Uder. You can go Leandris into full tank, and you're going to do a ton of damage while still being tanky, so this item is not just for, you know, historically AP champs, it can be good on very tanky champs that utilize magic damage in their kit. Now, it's mainly built on champions like Rumble and Mordekaiser, where you're going to be having a lot of all-in threat, but even if they build MR or stack HP against you, this item is going to help you a lot. So keep that in mind, this item is best built if you're up against tanks as well. So if you're playing Maud, maybe in some matchups you'll go Riftmaker or Protobout like we talked about before. But if you're up against a Cho'Gath or a Scion, then Leandris is going to be your best friend. Or even if you're up against a tanky Bruiser, let's say you're up against Jax, but they have a Sejuani jungle, then the item is still going to have a ton of value as long as they have a bit of beef in their team comp. 
Next we have Death's Dance, and I won't talk too much about items that are very similar to Last Split, but this item is still good in the same places. If you're playing an AD Bruiser Champion and you're up against a primarily physical damage comp, you're probably not going to be building items like Sunfire Cape. If you're playing a champion like Riven or Yone, Death's Dance as a third item most of the time is going to be very valuable. If you're getting bursted down or you know, you're know you going to have to fight these AD champions in side lane, then the armor you gain from Death's Dance and the passive and team fights is going to be very valuable for you. Moving on to Hollow Radiance, and this item is basically just the Magic Roots of Sunfire Cape, so really good on tanks when you're up against an AP threat in lane, or even a heavy magic damage comp. So let's say for example you're playing Malphite or Scion, you're up against a Vlad, maybe an Akali, this item is going to be very valuable, especially versus a ranged champion like Vlad or Teemo, you want to be clearing that wave as fast as possible. So using this item to do so, so that you're not going to be under threat of being poked by them, it's going to be quite good. You can just one-shot the wave with this item, and your spells of course, and then move to a team fight and group up. It's a really good alternative to Sunfire Cape, where in the past you might have had to sit on Barmy Cinder, then build MR to not get destroyed in lane. Now this item, especially once you've completed it, actually gives you power to fight back. If you have won your lane before that point, maybe you can actually beat them up as well. So this item is just basically... In the same position, we'd build a Sunfire Cape on these beefy tanks that like that extra wave clear, that extra damage, but just when you're up against a magic damage top laner or a very heavy magic damage team comp. Next we have Riftmaker, and this item is very similar to last season, really good on AP Bruiser champions. They want to be fighting for a long period of time. So champions such as Gwen can buy a lot of time in team fights with her W and her healing. Champions like Mordekaiser, you can always hold one guy and just stack it fully, unless he one-shots you in the realm, and you can even build it on top lane Swain. Because that champion really hard to kill in a hurry, you can stay along, you can stay alive in a very long time in a fight, especially with this item. So it's really good on these AP Bruiser Drain Tank type champions that want to be fighting for a long period of time. Next up, we have Shadow Flame, and even though this item is quite powerful, it can be very difficult to build in top lane. The main champions you're going to be building it on are going to be Cannon and Akali, where if you can combine this item with Storm Surge, it's going to make you quite powerful. Just keep in mind, because you're a top laner, you might be versing a lot of tanky champs in top jungle, and if they're looking to stack a lot of MR, then you're not going to be wanting to delay your Void Staff or your Crippling for this item. Where let's say you're playing Kennen, you've got Proto Bout and Storm Surge, and you're starting to see some MR, some Null Magic, some Merc Treads, maybe even a Kena Grukin, you probably don't want to be going to Shadow Flame, you need to get some Magic Pin at that point. But if you're really fed, you're snowballing, or you rush Storm Surge on Akali for example, then you can look to pair this item with it and it's going to help you snowball even further. So it's basically an item that's really good for snowballing, I would say, because you're going to be delaying key items such as Zonyas or Void stuff, but if you're already really ahead of the curve, then it's fine to do so. Moving on to Icepawn, and this item is an A tier for one reason, and that reason is Kassante. He uses this item so well, it got a lot cheaper this season, so of course that benefits him a lot, he can get to the spike a lot faster, and this item gives him a ton of kill threat. So he benefits a lot from this patch. Now there's not really many other champs you'd build this item on. You can build it on a champ like Scion if you're up against a ranged champion and you're snowballing. But for the most part this item is mainly for Cassante. He just benefited a lot from this patch and he builds it basically every single game. Which is why it's here. Moving on to Sunfire Cape and this item you build it in these same spots as last season. If you're playing a tank we need that extra wave clear. So let's say you're playing Scion for example. Or all in this item can be really good, especially if you're up against an AD Bruiser in lane, where they're going to be hitting you a lot, and if they're melee range especially, let's say you're playing Orn versus Renekton, this item will give you a ton of value not just from wave clear, but in the trades as well. Up next we have Titanic Hydra, and at the start of the season this item was quite overpowered. I would have put it in S tier, but it is getting a pretty significant hotfix nerf in 14.1b, so I'm going to put it in A. Still a very strong item even after the nerf, but the champions this item is best on. There's going to be champions such as Renekton, champions like Urgot or Shen that use the wave clear and the auto attack reset quite well. It's also good on Camille, Fiora, Jax, you know, the, the classic carry champions. And you definitely need a Tiamat item on Fiora and Camille, but sometimes you want to go Titanic over Ravenous in games where you're primarily team fighting. So let's say your team's playing a hard engage comp, you guys are winning a bunch of fights, and side lane's not really a win con. Maybe you lose side or the your opponent's strong, you can't really take towers. So taking a Titanic Hydra build for Camille, for example, is going to allow you to engage a lot more freely because you're going to be a lot more tanky, and it's going to give you a bit more burst, of course, with that auto attack reset. And even on a champ like Fiora, you'd probably lean more towards Ravenous Hydra, getting that lifesteal and bonus stats for 1v1ing, but you can go Titanic in games where you want to be grouping up fighting around Baron, maybe, and you want to be a bit more beefy. Now, it's best on champions, of course, such as Renekton, Shen Urgot, bruises like that, where the wave clear is quite beneficial, and the reset. Even on Renekton, you can cancel your W stun animation with it. Very good item. But also, this item can be good on Jax as a first item. 
Now, in the past when you versus a tank, what I like to teach my students is you can take Grasp and play to demolish a tower. You build big waves together and proc your demolish on the wave. You look to proxy, get a good recall, and that is the best way to play against tanks because you don't want to solo kill a Malphite, you know, three times. He's still going to be a Malphite. It's better to blow up his tower. And Titanic Hydra, now you don't really have that option of just going Sundra and scaling and beating the tank, you know, by default. Now you can go Titanic Hydra try to build waves together, but harder with this item, but of course you can just primarily push waves in front of him, look to demolish waves on a demolished tower, sorry, on a cannon wave, and then look to clear the wave between the towers, eat the enemy jungle camps, and take over the map in that way. So it can be quite good for that grasp jack style, but on lethal tempo, I probably wouldn't go build this item after the hotfix, stick to the, you know, more so carry style build of jacks with triforce and lethal tempo, but on champions like Fiora, you know, Renekton, and Urgot, this item can be really powerful. Moving on to Cosmic Drive, and even though this is primarily a mid lane item, there are still some top laners that use it quite well, and the champions that come to mind are champions that use movement speed and ability haste quite well. So Vladimir uses this item, Silas top, if you wanted to play that into maybe you counter pick Malphite or you counter pick Sway. Cosmic Drive as a second item on Silas can be really good. You can build it second on Vlad or first, depending on matchup. This item in general is mainly for AP champs that want to be utilizing that MS, and champions that want to be sticking on your opponent. Moving on to Experimental Hexplate. Now this item is quite strong on a few champions, and the main one is going to be Olaf. He benefits a lot from this item. The problem lies in the fact that it doesn't give ability haste. And Olaf, you need haste, so on him you would build Ravenous Hydra first into Hexplate. I'm not a big fan of Stridebreaker right now. It feels quite underwhelming. We'll touch on that later. But going Hydra into Hexplate is a great combo. And on Aurelia, you could go Bork would send Hexplate in certain games. Even on Jax, you can build Hexplate in games where you're primarily split pushing. So ch uh, champions that use the movement speed and attack speed quite well, they really want to be sticking on your opponent and getting their damage down. This item will benefit a lot for them. But you can't just build on everyone. For example, on Camille, it's not going to be that useful. You can already get onto your opponent and stay on them quite easily. Doesn't really do much. Of course, she's not an attack speed based champion. And technically, I would say Olaf's not an attack speed based champ. But of course, the more orders you get, the more your E comes off cooldown. And the movement speed you gain from ulting is going to be a huge benefit for him. So it doesn't have to be champions that only, you know, focus too out on the attack speed side of it. Movement speed users as well are going to benefit too. Now, as for Witsend, the biggest change to this item is it now gives tenacity, which can be really good on champions such as Yone, where you don't want to be building Merc Treads on him because it feels quite horrible, but now you have the option to build a bit of MR, a bit of tenacity, and not completely ruin your build. You can still get those early Berserker Greaves on Yone and be quite strong. You can pick up a Witsend as a third or fourth item on Yone, maybe even a second item in heavy AP comps. And similar to Jax, where a second or third item it can be good, same with Irelia. Depending on what you're up against, you have to see, of course, crowd control and magic damage to make it valuable. But especially if you're up against a champion in Silent that's going to be doing magic damage to you, let's say you're up against a Gragas, this item is going to benefit you a ton. Of course, the tenacity works well on him. You don't have to just build it when you need tenacity, but you shouldn't build it in games where, let's say you're playing Jax vs Fiora, you know, they have a kindred jungle. Of course, this item's not going to give you much value in a game like that. Moving on to Nash's Tooth, and this item is best built on AP champions that utilize auto attacks quite well. So Teemo, really good at rushing this item. Or you can build it on Gwen or Mordekaiser as a second or third item. It works quite well on them. You don't want to be building it on champions that are primarily relying on their spells. So champions like Kennen. Of course, it's better to build more magic pen and AP than relying on attack speed auto based builds like this. But it's really good on these AP bruiser champions that utilize auto attacks and want to be playing quite heavily in the side lane. Next up we have Eclipse, and originally I thought this item was going to be quite bad as they removed their lethality from it, but it's actually pretty good on certain champions. There's actually a build running around on Fiora, where you go Ravenous Hydra into Eclipse as a second item, and it gives you quite a lot of dueling power in the side lane. It makes you quite powerful, and of course you can still build it on classic Eclipse users, such as Pantheon or Riven. You don't really want to be building it on Aatrox anymore, but generally the champions that built Eclipse in the past can use this item quite well. Jace as well, I'd stay away from Eclipse on him. You mainly want to be building it on strong side laning champions. Moving on to Kraken Slayer, and the main reason this is in the top lane tier list is for champions like Yone and Yasuo, where on Yone a lot of times you can rush Blade of the Rune King in tanky matchups, for example, you might need it versus an Orn or a Scion to get through them, but Kraken Slayer versus heavy squishy comps, or just, you know, squishy top lanes in general, can give you a lot of 1v1 power. Next up we have Quick Blades, and this is here for Gangplank. The items that only really work on one or two champs, I won't go in much detail about. But on GP, of course, this item is going to be very powerful on him. You can go this as your second item after Essence Reaver. Moving on to Voltaic Cyclo Sword, and there's not many top laners that can build this item. It's mainly for jungle and mid, but I have seen a couple Rengar tops build it as a one-shot build against squishy tops, or squishy comps in general. And you can actually look to build this on Aatrox in very rare matchups, where it can be your replacement. 
if you're a Leaf Elder Aatrox player, like Zayus said at Worlds last year, the reason he didn't play Gordrick Aatrox is he doesn't know how he's a Leaf Elder Aatrox player. So if you're really missing that Leaf Elder star with Dusk being, being removed and Eclipse being nerfed, then you can look to build this item. But I only really build it versus Squishy Comp or if you're versus a range top, the passive can be quite beneficial. And the build path for this item is really nice. So getting that early Brutalizer on Aatrox feels a lot better. Then the Cauliflower Hammer from building it to Shojin. So I, I only recommend this item very rarely, but if you love that lethality style of Aatrox, you can look to mess around with it. Moving on to Opportunity, and this is more of a one champion item as well. This item is mainly for Jace in the top lane, where if you can, you want to stay in lane for a 1k gold and get your Dirk a lot easier now that the item is cheaper, and then you can go tear on your second recall into Opportunity, and it's a very powerful one item spike. Finishing off A tier with Blade of the Rune King, and this item feels a lot better now that it procs on one auto attack instead of three. This item is best built on on hit auto attack based champions such as Yone or Irelia, where it feels quite strong on Irelia right now, where in the past you had to proc it with three, but now you can just basically Q onto someone's head. You can Q a couple creeps, Q onto them. It's going to be really easy for you to stick onto them and land your spells. If you're hit, of course, if you're behind, you might need to land your E first. It really depends. But for the most part, this item gives her a lot more threat. And it's also really good on Yone up against really tanky comps or just tank matchups in general. Starting off B tier, we have Trinity Force. And even though as a completed item, it feels quite powerful, the problem lies in its build path. Because now that Sheen costs 1000 gold, it can feel really awkward to buy and get early spikes in lane. Where even if you did get to 1k gold, in the past you could get Sheen Longsword if you had 1050, and that feels like a great spike. But now having to spend your full 1k gold just to get Sheen makes it really awkward. Because the way you do a trading pattern on Jax, a standard pattern, is you would jump onto them. Of course use your stun, auto W, stun them and walk away to trade like that unless you're going for an all-in but generally you're going to be waiting for your next set of cooldowns your next e to come up before you trade so it doesn't really matter if your e is coming up in 15 seconds or 13 seconds it doesn't really change much but the extra ed you can gain from that longsword did so now that you're spending a lot more gold or very similar damage of course if they all in you that ability case can matter in certain situations i'm not saying it's completely useless it's just not as strong as having an extra longsword in most standard training patterns However, the item is still very strong, so you will build it on the standard Triforce users such as Jax, Camille, Nah, champions like that still use this item very well. Just keep in mind the build path can feel quite awkward. However, on Camille now you have the option to opt into an early tier mat, help with your wave clear. Of course, she does need a bit of help in that regard, so you can go tier mat into Triforce on her. And it does spike really hard, just keep in mind you are going to be weaker early on. And not to fall into the trap of building a half-bound axe or anything like that, I prefer to go components. So if you can go a couple of long swords. Try to get your Sheen as well, even though it is weaker than before, a Sheen is still really good, especially on champions like GP, Camille, this item is still quite strong. And Phage is actually quite a nice change, because Kindle Gem felt quite weak as well, for the same reason. Haste doesn't really help you that much in a lot of matchups, so having that option to go Phage can be quite nice, but Sheen of course is going to be stronger in a lot of matchups. And other than that, just opt into a couple of Longswords, Ruby Crystal, and try to not do your best. Of course, you still want to be trying to win your lane, but it's just a lot harder now that these spikes are a lot uh, more expensive, I would say. So just keep that in mind. Your laning's not going to be quite as strong early game, but you're still going to scale quite nicely once you get that one core. Next up, we have Shirelda's Grudge, and I actually like the way the new item is, even though you don't really get that slow anymore. The build path is just 10 times nicer. It builds out a Brutalizer, which is quite a strong item, and building this on Jace or Aatrox as a third item can feel extremely good, because two and a half items is around the time. Two items, two and a half, you're fighting around Baron, so having Brutalizer as your half item feels way better than having the Cauliflower Hammer or the Last Whisper. It's a much stronger standalone item. So this build path is quite nice, even though not getting that slow may hurt Aatrox in certain games. It doesn't really matter on a champion like Jace, and in general this item is just quite good in games where you really need that armor pin. Next we have Ravenous Hydra, and this item is still extremely good on champions like Camille and Fiora, where you desperately need the wave clear. And this item makes you really strong in side lane, gives you the ability to eat camps. Really good on them. You wouldn't really build it on Riven anymore, she does better with the Profane Hydra, we'll touch on that later. And it's a really good first item on Olaf where you can just power farm on this item, you get the ability haste you need, but the damage we do need to pair it with a tankier item, we touched on that before, Hex played as a 2 core, but this item is just really good in general, but now the only difference is you can actually look to rush this item, where in the past you would generally rush your mythic, but now as Fiora you can build this as your first item, as Camille, I do recommend sitting on Tiamat into Triforce, as she spikes really hard on Triforce, but in general this item is more flexible now than it was in the past. Moving on to Sterax Gage. Now this item is still very strong on Bruise of Champions such as Renekton or Aatrox. Just make sure you don't build it as a first or second item of course. Best bought as a third or fourth. 
Where on Aatrox, for example, you can look to go Spear of Shojin into Sundered Sky and then go Sterix as your third item, give you a bit of beef because around that time, around three items, a lot of champions are starting to do a lot of damage in the game. They might have a lot of bursts, so Sterix is going to give you a ton of survivability. Next up, we have Randuins, and this item is best bought in games where they have multiple crit chance users. So let's say they have a Yone or a Yasuo somewhere in their comp, a traditional AD carry, or just in a game where their crit ADC, let's say they have a Jinx, Jinx Lulu comp, they are doing most of the damage. This item can feel really good to buy. And you don't just have to build it on tanks, you can build it on bruises as well, but I'd make it mainly a third or a fourth item on that. Now we have Rabadon's Death Cap, and I'm not going to go too much into it, you all know what Death Cap does, a very staple item of League of Legends, however a lot of people are making the mistake now that I see, there are so many AP items to choose from, they are skipping Rabs completely until 5th or 6th item, it is still very powerful as a 3rd or 4th item, you can still go 3rd item Death Cap on a champion like Gwen or Vladimir and it's going to give you a ton of value if you don't need that magic pen straight away. So don't just tunnel on buying the new fun items, of course you can if you want to try them, but Death Cap is still very powerful as a third or fourth item. And now Void Staff, very similar to Death Cap, very staple item, you're going to be building this as a third or fourth item in games where you need Magic Pen. So on champions like Gwen or Vladimir or Rumble, if they are stacking a lot of MR or just building MR in general, this item can be very valuable. Now you do have a bit of variety now, it's not just oh they have MR build Void, you do need to decide between Void and Crypto Bloom. And it really depends on how much MR they have, because of course Void Staff gives more magic pen. So if they have really beefy champions, let's say they have an Orn with Kanek Rukin, Holy Radiance, of course Void Staff's going to be very valuable. So keep that in mind. But Crypto Bloom can be good in games where they're still building MR, but it's not that bad. You know, you're not desperately in need of heavy magic pen. Or just in games where you have a dive gun. So let's say you're playing a Kali top with a Yone mid, let's say you have a Rek'Sai jungle, everyone's probably going to be going forward in their comp, Kaiser AD carry. So the AoE heal you get from a takedown is actually going to be very beneficial from that item or on champions where the ability haste is very valuable so on a champion like Gwen for example haste is not actually that valuable you're only going to get one w down in a fight and your q and e cooldowns are quite low on already so i'd prioritize void stuff on her over crypto bloom but on a champion with lois with where the cdr is more important such as vladimir crypto bloom can actually be a bit more valuable moving on to malignants now the top lane champions that use this are mainly timo and swain but this item is quite hard to build. I recommend building it as a second item on those champs where Swain is more Rift Maker and you can go with Malignant second in certain games. And Teemo, you really rush Nashes into Malignant and give you that extra Shroom damage, allow you to set up Shrooms more often, more damage. Really good on that champion, really good on Swain. It's just really hard to build as a first item without being too squishy and vulnerable. Moving on to Zonya's Hourglass, and with the removal of Stopwatch, the value on this item increased in my opinion, and it's best built on AP champions where you need that survivability. So champions like Kennen or Rumble or Gwen it can be good on, but keep in mind you do not build this item every game, you only build this item if you need it, where if they have a strong dive comp or, a, or AD assassins, such as Zed or Talon diving onto you, of course on Rumble or Kennen this item will be really valuable, or just in games where you're the primary engage, let's say you're playing Kennen, you're going to engage onto them, but they have disengaged tools. They might have Lee Sin Kick, they might have Tristana ulti, and having that ability to hard engage flash ulti Zonias so they can't kick you away. Is going to be quite valuable but in general you build this item on games where they they have a lot of threat onto you a lot of dive champions a lot of assassins that are going to be blowing you up and without this item it's going to be really hard for you to live moving on to abyssal mask now i still rate this item quite highly it is quite strong the only reason i've demoted it is because on this season there are a lot of mr items and just tank items in general that are really powerful so this item in the past it was quite strong because the mr options were horrible and this item was quite cheap but now that you have so many good options that the games where this item is OP have decreased, still a good item if your team is playing quite well, your strong AP carries are doing you know, a lot of damage, they're doing quite well, you can of course build this item. Or in games where you're starved for gold and you need MR, this item can work as well, mainly as a third or fourth item. Moving on to Black Cleaver, and personally I'm not a fan of this item, I think it's quite overrated, but in terms of its raw stats, it is quite strong, giving CDR, AD and HP. That's how a lot of top laners use, and it's still best built on champions such as Renekton or Cled in games where you might be up against a tank and you definitely need that armor pin, so Shojin's not going to be as valuable for you. Now, as for Essence Reaver, the only reason I have this item in this list is for Gangplank. This is still your first item in a lot of matchups, this item into Navori Quickblades, really strong two item spike on this champion. Moving on to Crypt Bloom, we talked about it a bit in the Void Staff section, but this item is best built in games where you desperately need the Magic Pen. So mainly as a third item, maybe even fourth item, on champions where you need Magic Pen and you use Ability Haste quite well. They're really good on champions like Vladimir and Gragas, AP users where you use the Haste well, but quite bad on champions like Kennen or Rumble, where you don't really want to be building Haste on those champions, you prefer the raw stats Void Staff will give you. 
Next up we have Terminus, and this item is quite rare to build on top lane as well. It's best built on champions that use attack speed on hit style of play. So champions like Aurelia use this item quite well, but I'll only really build it in games where you're snowballed, you're quite far ahead, and you don't need to be building defensive items. You can use this item as a way to power up your side lane power, your 1v2, 1v3 skirmish situation. It can be quite good. Not that good in team fights compared to other items, or on a champion like Varus Top. This item, of course, very strong, but I hope none of you watching are playing that champ because we don't want to see that running around top lane for much longer. Next up, we have Profane Hydra, and this item is mainly for Riven. There might be a couple other users, but this is the main champion I've seen it on, and it can be quite good in games where you want to play that style of shoving your opponent under tower, proxying between the waves, eating jungle camps, this item can be a really good pickup because you don't need to waste gold on lifesteal, which is not that beneficial on Riven. You can instead get a lot of ability haste and lethality. Moving on to Archangel stuff, and this item is primarily for mid lane. However, there are a couple top lane situations where you would build it. So if you've counter picked a Rumble, for example, with Ryze, that can be quite a good matchup. Of course, you do want to build Archangels on him or in a game. Where let's say you've played Gregus, you've got an early tier for lane, and you base with enough gold for Archangels as your second item, it can be quite good as well. Of course, there are other items that are better, but sometimes it's best to just spike as early as you can, and picking up an early Archangels when you already have a fully stacked tier can be quite good on Gregus, but in general, I'd stay away from this item in top lane, very rare that you'd build it. Next up, we have Mana Mune, and another shout out to Jace, this item is just for him, and this item is of course Jace's second item, you will go... Your first item, you'll go Dirk into Tear into Completed Opportunity, into Mana Mune second, and your two item spike is going to be very powerful on that champion. Moving on to Gwintu's Rageblade, and unfortunately the only reason I have to put this item in this list is because some top laners are playing champions like Vayne and Varus. Really good item on champs like that, on hit users that get a ton of value from the passive, and on Vayne you definitely need to have this item in your build especially. Moving on to Locket, and this item is quite underrated on tanks because there are a lot of fun tank items right now to build, but this item can be quite good as it's really cheap, only 2200 gold, if you're up against big AoE spells, so champions like Karthus or Kennen, they're going to be looking to hit big AoE abilities on your team, but if you're playing a tank and you have Locket, you can mitigate a lot of that damage for your teammates. So I wouldn't recommend building it early on, mainly as a third item it can be quite good, and just in general because it's so cheap it can be quite a good pickup at denying these AoE champions. Next up we have Thorn Mail, and this item is pretty straightforward, you build this in games where you need healing cut and you also gain value from the armor. So let's say for example you're playing a tank, let's say Cassante or Orn, and you're up against a Fiora or a Renekton. Those champions have a lot of healing in their kit, they're very auto attack based, so getting an early Bramble Vest in that matchup, then finishing your first item. So on Cassante you could go Bramble into Iceborne, into Thorn Mail, something like that, and on Orn you could go Bramble Sunfire Thorn Mail. So as a second item, but you can get a Bramble Vest early on in games where you need that heal cut. Up next we have Unending Despair, and even though the passive of this item is actually quite strong, it can be quite hard to fit this in your build on a lot of champions. So let's say for example, you're playing Cassante, you're probably going to look to go Iceborne early on, and then that, that item only gives armor, so you're probably going to go for an MR item second, let's say Kainic Rukun, or maybe even Hollow Radiant, and then you need to get your Protein item third, and then by then the game is probably going to be over. Most of the time the game is over around that point, but if the game keeps going, most of the time on a tank champion, for your 4th and 5th items, you mainly build more supportive items such as Abyssal Mask or Locket or Knight's Veil vale, because you're already tanky enough. You're not going to go, you know, Hollow Radiance 3rd and Koenig Rukin 4th. Maybe in some games you will if they have a ton of AP damage, but most of the time you look for more supportive items later on or you just adapt to what's happening. And this item is not that good later on to the game. It can be good in games where they have heavy physical damage comps, so you don't really need to get a standalone MR item other than Jack Show the Protein. It can work there as a second item, or on champions like Dr. Mundo who just really want to get stuck in and just be down the back line. Dr. Mundo is less of a tank where, you know, you create space for your team, you can more so disrupt the back line, so this item can be quite good on him, but in general this item it can be good in heavy physical damage comps, but other than that it's just too hard to fit into your build. Moving on to Trailblazer, now this item is essentially Dead Man's Plate, but a cheaper version and more for your team. So you get slightly less resistances, get less movement speed for yourself, but your teammates can now follow you and gain a burst of movement speed from following you, so it's really good for hard engaged team comps. Where let's say for example you're playing Malphite and you want to be hard engaging, your team want to be following you in. Let's say if it's in Zao jungle, you're in a mid, champs like that, of course they want to be going forward, Leona's support, then this item can be really good. Because you can hard engage onto their backline and your team can actually follow you up and make it, it can make it a lot easier for them to do so. But again, there are a lot of tank items. The reason why it's in B tier, quite low on B tier, there are a lot of stronger tank items, so I wouldn't go this item that often. Just if you have a hard engaged comp and it's really important you get into their backline, maybe your AD carry is playing terribly, maybe the AD carry is quite strong, and you do have some dive buddies on your team that could get a lot of use from this move speed. 
Moving on to Serpent's Fang, and another shout out for Jace, this item is primarily for him, and this item is mainly built in games where they have a lot of shielding. So let's say for example they have Cog Lulu Comp, they might have an Ivern, this item is going to give you a ton of value, but it is quite hard to build. You don't really want to be skipping Shirelda's Grudge, so you do build this item fourth most of the time. Maybe if they have no armor items, they have a very squishy team comp, you can build it third, but most of the time your build is going to be Opportunity into Manamune, into Grudge, and then this item fourth if you need the shield cut. Moving on to Infinity Edge, and this item is just here for Yasuo and Yone. Of course, Yasuo barely played top, but Yone is quite a powerful top laner right now, and in games where they have quite a squishy comp, you can look to do the Kraken into IE build and give you a ton of bursts as a two item spike. Now again, Lord Dominic's Regard, an item you barely build on top lane, the only reason I have it here is for Gangplank, you're going to be building this in games where you need the armor pin as your third or fourth item. Up next we have Lichbane, and this item is quite difficult to build as well for top lane, it's best built in games where you're snowballing and you use the auto attack passive quite well and the movement speed. So the champion that comes to mind, Gragas, can actually build this item, it'll give you a ton of burst, but I strongly recommend only building this in games where you're snowballing. Moving on to Knight's Vow, now this item is built on tanks in games where you need to be keeping a key member of your team alive. So let's say for example you're AD carry, later on to the game he's playing quite well, but they have a ton of dive thread onto him, he's quite vulnerable, this item can give him a bit of survivability and feel quite nice, because at that point in the game, once you already have 2 or 3 tank items, the extra tank item's not going to win you the game, right? You having that extra little bit of armor and HP from a, from a full tank item is not going to be the difference maker most of the time, once you've already got your 3 core, your armor, your MR item and your protein, most of the time you can look to build supportive tank items such as Locket in certain games or Knight's Vow in different games. Next up we have Anathema's Chains, and I'm just a big hater of this item in general, I feel like it's quite useless, because you mainly build this item on tanks, where there's just so many strong tank items in the game right now, you don't need to be building this gimmicky item to mark one guy, the only time I can see it being good are in games where they have a literal one threat comp, where say for example they have a Jinx, you know, support Lulu, Jungle Ivern, just a bunch of people keeping him alive, Karma Mid, just champs where only one guy on their team is useful, and the rest are quite worthless. This item can be quite good, but of course in games where they have a really strong side laner as well, this item can give you a bit of breathing room, but in general I'd stay away from this item and only build it in situations where you really need it. Next up we have Hullbreaker, and a lot of people are probably sad, and a lot of you are happy that this item got basically gutted. It's still good on certain champions, the champions where you don't really have that option to group. So champions like Alawi, it can be really good on. Champions like Yorick, where you just want to be full split pushing the whole game, and that is your clear win condition, that's your key identity. This item is still good on them. You can still build it on Fiora as well. In games where you don't really want to be grouping up, you think side laning and split pushing is the win condition. Depends on the game state. This item can be really strong on champions like that. Moving on to Spirit Visage, and this item is quite weak right now because there are so many better MR items. The times where you would build it, are in games where you have healing on your team that is going to be benefiting you. So let's say for example, you're playing a tanky top laner, let's say Aatrox, of course Spirit Visage is going to give you value by itself, but also you have a Soraka on your team. The healing he gives to you, or a Yumi that's been riding you, let's say you've been carrying, the healing they give to you is going to be amplified, so it's going to be quite valuable in that regard, but I wouldn't really build this item in games where you're the only way you're going to be healing yourself, if that makes sense. So you really need to have enchanters, that are going to be making this item more valuable for you if you want to be building it. Next up we have Banshee's Veil, and this item actually feels a lot better now, that you can actually get a bit of a mini Banshee's at 1800, the Vernon Barrier feels a lot better than it used to, just keep in mind it's very rare you build this on top lane, the champions you do build it on, champions like Kennen or Gwen for example, you only build it if you desperately need MR, if they have a really heavy AP comp, and you're playing basically a full AP champion. Next up we have Hard Steel, and in my eyes this item is a bit of a noob somper. The lower elo you go the better, the more free stacks you're going to get, and it's best built on champions such as Dr. Mundo or Sion, in matchups where you're just going to be stacking for free. You don't really need the wave clear, you're not getting punished that hard. If you feel like you can get away with it, this item is great, it's a pretty greedy choice, but it's really good on these really tanky health stacking champions. Moving on to Rod of Ages, so very rare that you'd build this on top lane, but it can work on certain champions such as the AP Malphite build with First Strike, it can still be good, or you can build it on Silas top, if you've looked to counterpick a Swain, or you've looked to counterpick a Malphite, it can work on him as well, because now that Everfrost is removed you need a good alternative. Moving on to Morellos, now I would very rarely build this as a top laner, if you're playing a full AP champion such as Akali, you're playing Vladimir, champs like that, you don't really want to be the one that's building healing cut, there are so many better items for you than this, but there are just some games where you need to, no one on your team's cooperating, they don't want to build healing cut, they have a lot of healing, they might have a Dr. Mundo top, they might have Soraka, of course champs like that, Aatrox, it can be really valuable, just only make sure you're building it in games where you absolutely need the healing cut. 
Moving on to Force of Nature, and this item is pretty similar to Spirit Visage, there are just better MR items in the game right now. The only time I'd really see you buying this are in games where they have a really heavy AP comp, so you need to build multiple MR items, or in games where they have champions such as Cassiopeia, where they have constant DPS from single spells, and the passive from this item is going to give you a ton of value. Next up we have Stride Breaker, and this item just feels like it got completely gutted, it got hit by a boss, it is just so much weaker than it was in the previous season, it doesn't give ability haste anymore, and the active actually doesn't do any damage, so a lot of champions that relied on this item to function, champions like Garen, their win rate is dropping, because this item is just so much weaker, I actually recommend staying away from it unless your champ absolutely needs it, so a champion like Garen needs it, you could probably still build on Darius, but for the most part this item just feels a lot weaker than it did in the past. Now as for Realized Crystal Scepter, this is an item that feels weaker this season than it did in previous ones. Even on champions that use it quite well, such as Mordekaiser and Singed, there are just better alternatives now. You can build Leandris into Riftmaker, that as a 2 item spike feels really good on those champions. Of course in some games, you will still go Realized. You can go it in heavy range comps, or on Singed in certain matchups where you need that extra slow to cut your opponent around, maybe such as a matchup like Jax, you could use it. But for the most part this item just feels a lot weaker than the alternatives. Now moving on to, in my opinion, the weakest items, the D tier items, and starting with Guardian Angel. Now GA was really good before, because you would go stopwatch and then you'd go GA. So you would have two huge opportunities to make game impacting plays. So for example on Camille, even if you're squishy with Triforce Ravi Hydra, you could cop a stopwatch, go for a hard engage, and then pop stopwatch. Of course it makes your engage a lot better, and then maybe you won the fight, maybe you got a couple kills, pick up your GA for the next fight, and you can keep using that basic, that stasis to be impactful in fights now that GA doesn't have stopwatch, you have to rely on fully completing the item, which takes a long time, very expensive, before you get the passive, and a lot of top laners just, GA is not that useful, where let's say you pop ulti on Aatrox, you go in, you die, you stand back up, your ulti's wore off, you're low HP from the revive anyway, you're probably not going to turn that fight around, it can be good of course in, on some champions such as Yone, where let's say they're all targeting you, Maybe you're the main carry, that item can work, or Aurelia, or even still Camille. It can be good later on, as a 4th or 5th item I would say, but for the most part the build path just makes it a lot harder to build early. And as for Kenpong Chainsword, this item just feels very weak as well. You do need it in games where you absolutely need the healing cut. On champions like Renekton for example, let's say they have Swain top, they have Sorak support. This item can work of course, but for the most part you want to be building different items. It's better to have more damage or more tanky stats than building this item, unless you just desperately need the healing cut. Moving on to Deadman's Plate, this item can still work on the classic Deadman's users such as Garen or Darius, but I feel like there are just better items in the game now. There are just so many stronger items that you can choose instead of this, and if you want that move speed passive, Trailblazer is going to be better in a lot of situations as well. It's cheaper, you can get your team involved. The only time I would build Deadman's would be on the champions we just mentioned, Garen and Darius, in games where there's just a ton of action happening, but you need to be using side lane, so you can't win a straight 5v5, you need to use the side lane to make somebody react and then use that extra move speed from Deadmans to rotate to the fight quickly, because of course on those champions you're not going to be taking TP. And now for Edge of Night, again another shout out to Jace, this item is here just for you. You can build this in games where you desperately need that spell shield. So let's say they have a Karthus, it can be quite good, or a Malphite and no other way to pop the shield. They have no long range poke, this item can work, but for the most part there are just better items in the game now. Moving on to Thimble Winter, in my opinion this item is just straight terrible. There's no situation where I would personally build it. But if you just feel like you have a ton of mana problems on champions like Gragas or Sejuani top or Maokai, these tanks where you can use a lot of spells if you want, this item can work on them, but just in general I would recommend not relying on the mana region from this item and just get better at using your spells because this item is just so much weak in comparison to all the other tank items. Moving on to more. now this item can be good on squishy AD champions where you desperately need MR, so it can work on a champion like Jace, but just in general, if you're playing a tank or a strong bruiser champion, there are just so many strong MR items to choose from right now, that more just feels really lacking in comparison, and I probably should have put it in C tier to be fair, it's not as bad as D, looking back at it, but I'm going to stick to my guns, I'm going to keep it here because this item just feels quite weak compared to the rest of the MR items, the times you would build it are in games where maybe you're playing Lethality Aatrox or Jace, and you really need MR as a third item. Next we have Mortal Reminder and I think this item is just quite weak in general on top lane. It can work on champions such as Garen or Yone in games where you really need the heal cut, but just in general there are better items to build and I'd only really build this in games where you absolutely need the heal cut on champions like that. Next up we have Yomu's Ghostblade, another item I consider quite weak for top lane. The only reason I have it on this list is it can work on Jace, 
as a fourth item in certain games where you don't really need more, you don't really need GA, you've already got your grudge and you don't need the Serpent's Fang heal cut. In that very rare situation you will build Ghost Blade, but other than that I don't really see a situation where you'd build it on top lane. And to wrap it all up, we have Warmog's Armor, and this item is just very weak right now because there are so many powerful tank items in the game, there's almost no situation where I build this. The only time you would, uh, when you're versus really heavy poke comp, where you're probably going to go Koenig Rukin anyway and be fine, but if you're playing a champion like Mundo, where you have the option to weave in now the fight, you can regen back, it can work, or if you're playing in low yellow and the fights go for a very long time and there's constant fighting, it can work, but I probably wouldn't build this item in any bracket above gold. Alright everyone, I'm going to end it there, and I hope this guide helped provide some insight to you on the best champions to use these items on, the best situation, or when you want to be building them, but feel free to let me know down below in the comments what you'd like to see me cover next, what champion builds you're missing out on, or just what you'd like to see me cover in this new season in general, and I'll see what I can do.